Well, hello everyone. October the 14th, this is the Eclipse edition. It's a powerful, super powerful eclipse we just had. This is the path you see it had over Earth's surface, starting here over on early morning and touching North America, actually, yeah, just a ca kind of in California entering, leaving here, going all through Central America, Panama, and then Colombia and Brazil, and then it's the sunset, moonset. Anyway, you get the picture. This is the second of three important eclipses which all have trans been transversing the Americas since um, in 2017 was the first one. You remember that, the Great American Eclipse, it was called a total solar eclipse that was. And then um, this one, number two, and the third one will be in 2024, April the 8th. So the two corner ones, 2017-2024, are total. And the middle one is annular. Hmm. Annular meaning that the moon is too far away from Earth to cover the whole radius of the sun. So the moon is slightly smaller than the sun, which in itself is um, one of the mysteries of our uh, reality here, that sun and moon are pretty close to each other, the same size, actually, as you hear, depending on if the moon is farthest away from Earth or closest, it um, is either a little sm too small or a little too big. So it is really uh, waving around this exact size the sun shows in the sky. So... The second of three eclipses being the annular. What do I see in that? Well, first of all, it's that threefold motion which we always see in astrology. A planet goes forward, backward through a degree, and then finally again is in a much clearer space, so to say. So the first is kind of the creation of the situation if you want. The second one is reviewing the situation, starting to find solutions to whatever the riddle was to start with and then with the third, the conclusion comes in. Now we can act out what we have learned and now we can apply it. That's kind of how it is. That's that weaving mo uh, motion planets make through the sky, particularly, excuse me, around the degrees where they station. So that said, you could say since 2017 we were in that first phase of really building the situation as is. Hmm? Slowly, slowly adding on, getting the whole full complexity of where we are today, having gone through all these six years. Hmm? I've learned a lot, I guess. Everybody has come long ways. Personally, collectively, everything is ready. Ready for a big change. And this is the eclipse which really induces this change because it shows the phase where action is starting to be applied. And I show you on a few things here. I mean, again, it's such a such a rich astrology, is so rich. Uh, that's my ch biggest challenge is to focus really on the most important, most outstanding fractals of this mandala. So first I want to say um, the eclipse here 2107 was the sun, 09 the moon. So the moon is already slightly past new moon. This is always interesting to watch. Eclipses can be having their peak moment as seen from Earth shortly before the moon comes to the new moon position or shortly after. And this is a 
I mean, must be a very, a very different energy of what the um, what the message is of the eclipse. What what it really is. Um, is planting a seed for and uh, literally uh, the moments uh, these moments when eclipses are exact I mean first of all this is an extremely rare event and second it has an impact on whole of nature I mean the birds start ch stop chirping um, the, the temperature falls up to 20 degrees or so uh, really and it is becomes frigid every being feels kind of the strangeness something is kind of subdued so what it really is it's like a a, a line is carved uh, it's almost like a surgical cut on 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 the surface of earth um, where that shadow is um interacting where the imbalance is there. It's, uh, it, it's the sun is blocked out at least to a big degree. So the imbalance is there. Something of the unknown, you could say, comes into this gap. And that is why these moments of eclipse are so super important. So the 22nd degree of Libra, solicitude is the word Dain Rudyard gives this degree. And this is the second part of, of um, Libra we are uh, speaking of between 15 and 30. That is about reconstruction. Yes, reconstruction. You hear it. This eclipse is anchoring in this particular part of the zodiac the 22nd degree and again the eclipse uh, is um, at its peak after the new moon so it is really forward oriented very clearly future oriented let's get something new on the go here this is the message so 22nd degree of Libra a child giving birds a drink at a fountain hmm? beautiful so solicitude is the word Rudyard actually or even already Mark Edmund Jones who is the original author of those Sabian symbols had come up with let me just read you uh, uh, one or two sentences here so it's it's really telling for the energy of these present times we are in where hands on action is taken from those who are represented here by the child which is that innocence and purity of intent feeding the birds and giving them a fresh water i mean you see that this this is loaded with symbolism water is water of life it's life energy and then um, in that sense also And the purity um, of, the, of the yes definitely uh, the connection between child and birds implies a spontaneous naive report rapport at the spiritual level a soul touch at the level of pure feelings so there's this element now awakened in pretty much on in everyone on this planet and just saying a thing and this was what excited me i mean aside from all the craziness in 2020 when the that whole um pandemic was um um, um opened that new face on this planet and it was global it was worldwide everybody was experiencing the same thing that really made me excited because this was a first yes not so a nice um notion of that singularity event we are heading towards where everybody is starting to come in resonance with everything else and it's a coherent field which builds that we are doing something in sync with the natural flow of this universe tuning into the natural rhythms and all of that 
Now, um, this, okay, <laughs> you see, this is for Greenwich for the Zero Meridian. Always, um, I find it, I mean, yes, you can choose any place on this plant, but this is a powerful place, naturally, where the Zero Meridian is, where, which uh, divides Earth into a Eastern and a Western Hemisphere. And um, you see, there's a perfect T-square. Hmm? This is, in a way, the most um, yang place in this chart. Uh, the, the, the 90 degree um, angle from the plumb line, hmm, that is where you stretch your hand out. Uh, it's just because we are uh, speaking of a northern latitude of 51 degrees that these two axes are not really straight on each other. This is the reason. But if you are standing straight on, 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 on this planet here, in this location, then your right arm is reaching out here, here in the center of the sixth house. The sixth house is all about that Virgo energy of rebuilding and of taking um, inventory first, seeing what needs to be done, uh, uh, writing down the, the, the job uh, uh, the jobs to be done, creating a job list, creating a structure, uh, a, a timetable, a, a schedule, all of that comes in here. Um, as we uh, go, I will show you why Cap um, Virgo is so important at its core. Well, first of all, it's the Venus, Venus placement here. You're coming out of this conjunction where it was for months on end and um, very close to Juno, is now separating, taking the lead, uh, has been connecting with the Black Moon, the Black Moon in Virgo pretty much since the beginning of this month too. So there's a new energy that Virgo Venus is um, representing that care, that deep love for um, uh, being a uh, a servant, a, a loving servant doing the right thing. It's it's um, the, the very feminine energy of motherhood and, and care. Yes, motherhood and its originality is definitely related to cancer, but the upbringing of the child is very much Virgo. So deep care is at the heart here. And again, so... Um, Let's look at another aspect of what's going on regarding the I Ching hexagram, the Jin Qi, which is ruling that part of the zodiac. It's Jin Qi 32. This is from Richard Rath, who always brings out these beautiful newsletters reminding us. And here is a a free audio one can access. I will um, share this link under the recording here so you can find that very eye-opening. Also a very different take of what's going on this week. We bow. This week we bow our heads in reverence to the ancestors, to the spirit of nature and to the lineage or lineages that we are drawn to or part of. You feel it. It's a very social, interactive energy, and it's actually on the vertical, connecting with the past and with the future, the lineages, where they come from, where they go. When we venerate that which is pure, hmm? we ourselves become pure. So, again, the word purity comes in through this door, too. And um, then um, the 19th degree of... Um, Taurus here r rising, that is <coughs> a new continent rising, <laughs> reconstruction, new continent rising. Yes, all of these energies and with Mars now in um, um, Scorpio, this is an intense an intense energy which wants to do the right thing and it's recognizing what is wrong, that was that exact Black Moon, Saturn opposition upon Mars entry here. Actually, have to chart once more. Yeah, we'll get to that. Anyway, so this is the 
Okay. <laughs> Arakot. Hmm? Arakot right at Maidhaven. I love it. It really just reiterates again what I have been saying for, for long. I mean, since 2019, the big awakening is in full progress. 2019, on the January the 1st, that was this close flyby of the New Horizons space probe, taking pictures and uh, getting a very, very clear understanding of its structure, of its whatever size and because it's actually two parts which have been come together and um, it looks like a, a little bit like a figure eight and has that zone of, uh, you have to look at it, it's uh, quite an amazing um, little celestial body, the farthest from Earth so far discovered. In that sense, it really opened our eyes to the history, to the creation of this whole solar system. Actually, the whole history had to be rewritten. That's how powerful this little body has shifted a reality already around. It is about, in that sense, getting it right, going to the most profound source of truth, of, of real information. Um, and also it is then has been named after in, a, in that um, native la uh, tongue, Arokot is the man standing under the open sky, seeing the whole panorama. Hmm, the Skywalker, you could call him. <laughs> anyway, right at midheaven and perfectly squaring the sun and the moon. I mean, you can't make these things up. And then, um, just to reiterate this again too, because it's super important, that um, a long-standing North Node Eris conjunction, which I guess is now on for at least three months already, within a very, very small angle, these two energies are linked in the North Node, the evolutionary direction on this planet, and Eris, the one which is not... Um, letting you go before you have faced the truth again the truth comes in again it's it's a very feminine energy but very uh, steadfast and strong and determined and i'm um, wanting to bring really the best out but in order to have that happen yes she throws in the golden apple or the golden apple of discord into the middle of the, of the um of the um <laughs> okay somebody knocked at the door anyway um in the middle of the table of on the, go, uh, the, the table round of up, up on mount olymp anyway you get the image here this is actually coming to be exact this conjunction the north node finally passing past uh, backward on mm -hmm. november the second that will be and um, November 4th, and that is when Saturn finally goes direct. And on the 29th, just to remind you once more, that is when, um, what is it on the 29th? That was the other one which I wanted to get back to. That is, no, it is the, yeah, it's the, the 29th, right, the 29th. That is when heliocentric Vesta and Australia will have their conjunction and those two are super uh, important as they really represent the energy again described by the sun and the moon's con co uh, conjunction here. So this is then the heliocentric moment of that um, today's peak eclipse. You see here we have Australia and Vesta already very close heliocentrically they will meet in the 18th degree on the 29th and this is um, obviously uh, the energy which we are needing right now look at this chart this is the <coughs> root of this solar eclipse family that was in uh, 1248, the first eclipse of this family, of this sequence, 
which lasts up, up to um, 25 centuries with the every 18 years a, a new eclipse and slowly slowly traveling over the globe from north to south or from south to north like spiraling that is um, a very interesting story in itself that every 18 years it links back to something which had been already building up so what is interesting here is um, this eclipse started with a eclipse in the ninth degree of cancer hmm? and if we overlay now today's let me swap that that's the way no um okay um right yeah okay yes that's the way i wanted it inside is the original the uh, eclipse of 1248 outside is the present eclipse at 2107 right here pretty close to the midheaven so shows that in this 1500 year period i guess i said it wrongly before an eclipse family is active this one comes in right at the culmination of uh, in this chart so it is uh, really bringing it out into the open and you see here we have um, Vesta and Australia conjunct this original degree I found this also interesting you see here we have the 24th degree of Sag and Gemini in the root kind of the ascendant descendant the interaction level of uh, where we how we meet with each other how we express these energies and when um, Mars and the Scorpio it's exactly squaring this axis okay I guess I leave it for that um, so I'll let you celebrate and um, hopefully you could observe it i was not so lucky here where i am there was um, dense clouds on the in the sky so have a, a good um, rest of this weekend and um talk to you soon again